Hello, welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. So we're going to continue from where we stopped in the last class on explicit biology jam preparation. So this time I'll be taking a look at the second topic in the jam syllabus, which is evolution among organisms. So now what I want you to know from this chapter or from this topic is the the layout and what is expected of you, how to approach um, questions in the exam. So without much ado, let me take you to the second chapter of the book, which is where, I mean, on which we base our topic on, or our teaching on rather. So now in this chapter, you have evolution among organisms and what you are expected to understand first and foremost is the classification and diversity of living organisms which is here so we have in classification of organisms we have kingdom we have phyla or phylum we have class order family genus and um, species so the simple way to remember that is king play card on fine green sand now i'll show you this image that in classifying organisms, when you have the big, the highest um, level is the eukarya, which is the true cells. Then you have kingdom, animalia. For example, if you're naming um, an animal, you have kingdom. Then you have phylum. You go to class, order, family, genus, species. Now we also have what you call the binomial system. In the binomial system, it says that when you're naming organisms, you assign them name from their genus and from their species. So binomial system means you're naming organisms using two names. And one is from the genus and the other one is from the species. So that specifies the particular organisms. One interesting thing I want you to recall in this, when you're taking a look at this uh, section is that in, at the level of um, domain and kingdom, it's um, it's very broad based. There are a lot of um, organisms at that level, but as you go narrow, as you go down, it narrows down into species. So this um, chart cannot be the other way around. Like it, it's it's usually like an upside down pyramid. It cannot be the other way around. So you can have. Um, Kingdom at this level. I've seen some images online where you have kingdom at this level of species, you know, and goes down. I mean, you have phylum here and like that, where you now have species at the broad, as the broad base of the pyramid. No, it can't be like that. So it means that if you go down, it narrows down to species. At that level of species, organisms are not um, species are organisms that can that can meet. All right, so you cannot. Um, they are very narrow at that point. So let's quickly continue from there. So what you find here, I've talked about the binomial system, then classification into five kingdoms. So you should also understand that um, in classifying organisms into kingdoms, you have the animal kingdom, you have the plant kingdom, you have fungi, you have the monera, and you have the protista. So the lowest level of the kingdom is the protista, and the highest level, I would say, is between the plant and the animal kingdom. And here is another chart to buttress what classification of organisms into five kingdoms are. And the property that is used to classify these organisms is basically the, the volume of cell and the presence or absence of cell wall. So in unicellular organisms, they are, they are the prokaryotes. And um, multicellular organisms are usually the eukaryotes. However, there are also unicellular eukaryotic organisms. So you have kingdom monera, kingdom protista, you have kingdom fungi, you have kingdom plantae, and kingdom animalia. And don't forget that the presence or lack of cell wall is what is usually the basis in grouping animals, I mean, organisms into these five kingdoms. Then we proceed to talk about the 
classification of plants. So in classifying plants, there are certain uh, criteria that are used. Uh, again, you still talk about the size of the cell and you, you then talk about the ability, I mean, does the, does the plant have um, true stem and leaf? I mean, true root stem and leaf, which is called the, the vascular system. So at the lowest level, we have schizophytes, and this is controversial. So in some cases, in some textbooks, you won't have it starting with the schizophytes, which are bacteria. They can also be classified as plants. And also you have the talophytes, which could include algae and fungi. And then you have the bryophytes. Now, bryophytes are non-vascular and non-flowering plants, all right? And they possess root-like structures, right, which is called the, the rhizoid. Now, examples are the moss and the liverwort and fern. I mean, liverwort and onwards. So the next one, I was moving to fast, is the pteridophyte, where you have a classic example being the ferns. Now, they are also non-flowering um, vascular plants. They are having structures resembling roots, stem, and leaves, all right? And they reproduce by means of gametes. Then the last level in classifying plants will be the spermatophytes. So these are seed-producing vascular plants. They have true roots and stem and leaves. So they are divided into... Um, they are divided on the basis either if they can bear um, seeds. Okay, so for the gymnosperm, they bear naked seed. And examples include the conifers, the cycads. If you go to a very varying area, you will find all these um, examples here. And you have the angiosperm. Angiosperm are, are seen as a true um plants because they also bear seeds but their seeds are not naked and they have a structure called the flowering structure which helps them to reproduce and they are further divided into monocots and then um, dicots then i can show you this image to buttress that so we have actually covered what this image is showing in that description if we proceed to talk about classifying, yes, this is a very good mnemonic to remember the classification of plants. Samuel, the biologist, planted sugarcane. All right, this is funny, but this is an interesting way to remember. So Samuel will stand for schizophyte, T will D will stand for talophyte, B biologist will stand for bryophyte, and planted will stand for pteridophyte, why sugarcane will stand for spermatophyte. Very funny, but it's an interesting way to remember this. Then we talk about classification of animals. Now, animals are classified into, of course, animal is a kingdom on its own. And then from kingdom, you go to phylum, from phylum, you go to class, all right, in that order. So if you are classifying animals, the, the next phylum would be either they have um, cords, that's vertebral system, or not. So you have phylum chordata, and you have um, in under phylum chordata. Then, I mean, you, you, you sorry, you define them whether they are backbone or they don't have uh, backbone. So the 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 ones with backbone are the chordate, and the ones without the backbone are the um, non coded or invertebrate. So, in this case, we'll def oh, let's begin with the classification based on those without the, the backbone, the invertebrate. So, you begin with the protozoa, followed by the poriferas, and go on to solenterates or nidarias. And all of these classes, they have specific. Um, um identification or specific characteristics that define them from others and in the absence of time we might not be able to go through all of that but you can find them in the book or in any other test book then you talk about the flatworm the platyamids the phylum platyelmids then those are those are four classes then the phylum nematodes the, which are the popular round worms and then we proceed on to talk about the phylum anelida, 
and um, arthropods and finally i think uh, we talk about the the phylum mollusk also, although we still have yes phylum echinoderms so all of these are the invertebrate then you talk about the phylum caudata which are the ones with the backbones then that lead us to classification i mean that lead us to talking about um vertebrate in particular which is a subphylum and we talk about the pisces that's the fishes then we talk about the amphibians we talk about the reptiles we talk about the birds or the herbs and we talk about the mammals so um what we have briefly done or quickly done is to have a general overview of this chapter and now because the topic says evolution among organisms so what is very key here is for you to be able to um to stratify these um levels from the the simplest to the most complex from the complex to the most simplest so in that order you could have questions ranging from questions such as let me see if i can quickly find one okay good this is a good question from 1994 which of the which of which is the correct order of an evolutionary sequence for the following plant group all right so you know that this is the simplest level the bacteria right which is the 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 spermatophyte i mean no schizophyte sorry then you move on to the next one i think this will be here talophyte algae is an example then you move on to bryophyte which is moss then you move on to pteridophyte, which is the fen, and then you go to the seed plant, which could be, um, which is a spermatophyte. It could be gymnosperm or angiosperm. So the, for this question, the right answer would be option C. So there will be more questions like that, okay, to to buttress your understanding of this chapter if you go through this but in the absence of time we might not be able to to take all of these questions but then you can get a copy of the book and then solve these questions the answers and the detailed explanations are also provided at the back of the book so on that note i would draw the curtain on this um, topic and in our next video i will proceed to the next one which is the structure and life histories of some organisms so before then please subscribe share like and comment that is the most important please i want to see your comment and help me to understand what i should do differently and how to make you understand these topics very well within the shortest time all right on that note see you in the next video Bye bye